Good morning. If we get everybody to move towards our seats, the CIE will start in two minutes. Good morning. Welcome to the Fort Knox Community Information Exchange. We appreciate you being here both in person and watching online. This event is being streamed on Facebook Live right now and you'll be able to view it anytime on the Fort Knox Facebook page. We are pleased to have here today US, U.S. Army Cadet Command and Fort Knox Commander Major General John Evans, his Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jeremiah Gann, the Garrison Commander Colonel Lance O'Brien with his Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major William Fogle, along with other senior installation leaders. As you can see from our agenda, we are covering a lot of good information today. For those who would like a digital copy of the slides later, please feel free to stop by the table in the back to sign up. If you're watching online and would like a digital copy of the slides, simply send us a direct message on our Facebook page with your name and email address. All right, before we go any further, I will turn it over to Major General Evans for his remarks. Sir? Can you guys hear me? There we go. Hey, uh, welcome, and thanks to everybody for being here. Uh, audience looks a little uh, small today. Uh, we'll work on the strategic communications and make sure we get the word to people about this. But for those who are watching online, thanks for dialing in. Pretty important stuff we're going to talk about today. So um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to get a feel for the things that are going on in our community. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I will tell you, this will be my last one. Uh, so a little bit uh, sad about that, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to be passing the torch. I want to introduce you to my successor, Brigadier General Johnny Davis, who's getting ready to take over Cadet Command next Tuesday. And joining him today also is uh, Colonel Mo Barnett, who is our new DCO, uh, and we're happy to have him on the ground here, and, and then he'll be partnering with General Davis as the transition occurs. Also, I don't think we've had a, a CIA since you've gotten here, have we, Lance? All right, so you're going to get to see him here, fe featured largely in a minute, but... Um, also got uh, Colonel Lance O'Brien, our new garrison commander here, who has already hit the ground running during a very, very busy time for our installation. He's done a great job. Hey, I wanna, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes, two or three things I want to talk about. Number one, uh, hopefully everybody's noticed that there are lots of people on Fort Knox right now that don't generally live here. Uh, those are my cadets, Cadre, RFF, that are supporting cadet summer training. We're excited to have them back. Uh, it has been an incredibly successful cadet summer training period. And for anybody who's counting uh, or is concerned about the COVID risk with cadet summer training, we did have positives as they came in. We expected that. We planned for that. We set aside quarantine and isolation quarters for that. We've been able to recover just about everybody who came in that was associated with cadet summer training back to full health. Most of them, the vast majority of them, will complete all of their training. So I just want to thank our public health team, our garrison, uh, the incredible folks here uh, from Cadet Command, uh, and across the installation that made that successful. So thanks to all those folks. Which brings me to my next point. I know Dr. James Stevens is going to get up and, and give an update, I think, on, uh, on uh, COVID here in a few minutes, him or one of his team. Folks, we are not out of the woods yet on COVID. So um, I don't know that I can beat this drum any harder. But please, if you have chosen not to get vaccinated, uh, for whatever reason, I would ask you to reconsider that. Our country will not escape this until we have vaccinated everybody. It's going to stick around. Uh, we have got people, lots and lots of unvaccinated people dying across the country right now. It's not fake news. It's not something people made up. It's not here to scare you. It's just cold, hard fact. The best way to protect yourself and our community is to get the vaccine. It is disappointing to hear that of the 40 to 50 percent of our population that is unvaccinated, some 80 percent of them have signaled they don't intend to get vaccinated. This is going to get worse for Fort Knox. 
you will see the mask coming back in the future, I guarantee you, because we haven't done the right thing up front. So, my parting shot, get the vaccine, please. Okay, I'm going to kick it back over to John. You got it. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the scheduled briefing topics. First, Dr. James Stevens, the Chief of Preventive Medicine, will provide a vaccination update. Good morning, all, and thank you very much. Looking at the COVID-19 update, as General Evans did discuss, we are on a rise across the nation and Kentucky included. We're looking at a 69% increase this week as we had last week compared to cases. When we look at those cases, over 90% of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are due to unvaccinated personnel. So it's a, a big, as General Evans said, a drum to beat to get you the vaccine. 40% of these cases are under 40, so this is affecting younger individuals as well. Fort Knox has not seen an incredible rise yet, but we will, just based statistically on the number of cases that we are gathering. When we looked at Cadet Command in and of itself, yes, we did import some. However, their mitigating strategies were so effective that not a single one of those cases that was brought on the installation caused a secondary or tertiary case on the installation. So thank you very much for all their hard work. Vaccine status, looking across the nation in and of itself, 59% of the United States have received a full vaccine. You might see numbers of 69%, and that's one vaccine that doesn't count much uh, until we get the full vaccine. In Kentucky, we are 61%, a little bit better. Fort Knox, we are not doing as well. We are only 52% of military, Department of Army, civilians, beneficiaries, and retirees at this time. Recommendations, even with the Delta virus and the, the other strains that are going throughout, first, second, and third treatment is vaccine, vaccine, and vaccine. As we have noted that a lot of these people who are having deaths, hospitalizations, and cases are unvaccinated. This has been proven that this is the best deterrent against your illness uh, for COVID-19. Basic hygiene in and of itself makes, uh, has no changes. Cough, cover your cough, cover your sneezes and social distancing. Masks, we are going back and forward with masks in and of itself. If you have not seen this pamphlet around, please look for it, it's on your table. This is a wonderful representation of what we need to do on Fort Knox right now. And I can't thank the PAO crew enough for developing this. Across Kentucky, we do know that unvaccinated, they do want to wear masks, but they are also looking at those people who are vaccinated who have comorbidities, as well as those people who work in public forums. If you are coming into a health facility, for example, Ireland Army facility, you must wear a mask, whether you are unvaccinated or not, whether you are a patient or an employee, you must wear a mask for Secretary of Defense and HQDA. Next slide, please. Looking at the COVID vaccines in and of itself, we've given over 8,000 shots on this installation. We have plenty to give out. We are continuing the building 1747, which is that complex across from Sam Adams. This building will be kept open. We do not have a closed date. We'll keep it open indefinitely. If you do want your vaccines, 502-526-SHOT, which is 7648, uh, call that, or go to the Ireland TRICARE website and sign up. This is what you'll find. As soon as you go to Ireland TRICARE, you'll see this. You can sign up right on that little link right there. We'll do anybody 18 and above. We have Moderna and Johnson & Johnson at this time. We do not have Pfizer yet, but we are preparing to receive that if it ever gets sent to us. 18 and above, civilian workforce, service members and their dependents, retirees and their dependents. Please, shots, shots, shots. As far as the flu shots, uh, also flu campaign, if we look at respiratory illnesses, starting September, flu is coming along as well, so we'll have another respiratory disease coming out. We are looking to keep the same building for the flu campaign at this time. Everybody knows where it is, everybody knows it's a vaccine site, and it can harbor anybody to include SRPs, individuals, however we would like to work it. As far as the flu, basic hygiene, same thing we do with COVID. Cough, cover your cough, hand washing, social distancing. 
And at this time, that concludes my brief, sir. Thank you, sir. Next, Mr. Josh Adams, the Dodia, Kentucky Community Superintendent, will provide a back to school update. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I jump in with the uh, information I need to share, I just wanted to say a quick uh, thank you to General Evans. Uh, you've been a fantastic partner to Dodia Schools the last few years. We really appreciate you, and we're very excited to work with the new command team as well. Uh, a few things to go through on the slides I have, and then I'm going to take a few minutes and talk about where we are with COVID going into the year. I don't have a slide for that because we just got our new guidance, but I will cover that as well. Uh, first, important information for you, student registration. If you haven't done so already, it's critical you get in and do that now. You can go to the DoDEA website. There's a link on there for our DOORS system, and that's how you get your student registered, but that's really critical to do so now. It impacts all of our planning for school. Uh, a date that's probably uh, scary to students but exciting for parents is August 9th is when our students return to school. It's our first day of school and our pre-K students will start on August 23rd. There's a bunch of key dates on the slide. I just want to pull a couple out for your attention. The first one is last year we had an early release day every week. Uh, one, one day of the week the students went home early. This year that's only going to happen once a month. So the school will send you lots of information to make sure you're aware of when that is but the first one September 7th. Another uh, item that's important is last year because we had to compress our calendar for the year because of our late start with COVID. We didn't have a fall break. That is returning this year. We will have a fall break and the dates are on the slide, but I know people will be excited to have that back in place. Uh, next slide, please. So I want to talk a minute just about sports. Something we worked really hard on through the spring was to get full fall sports approved. We appreciate the garrison support on that and our headquarters support, but we have the full slate of fall sports for our students. They're going to have girls volleyball, boys and girls cross country, boys and girls soccer, high school cheerleading, high school football, middle school girls basketball, and middle school cheerleading. So the kids are going to have a lot to be involved in. Uh, please pay attention to the information that comes out on how to sign up. I do want to read something that's on the slide there, but uh, a message from Coach Arnold. The head, of foot, the head football coach, he says, after a year away, we are so excited for the return of Friday night football here on Fort Knox. I have spoken with the command sergeant major, Fogel, about possibly having a different unit sponsor each home game this year. For details on what that entails, if your unit is interested in helping, please contact him and his, uh, his emails there in the slides. But come on out and support the team this year, uh, Eagle Pride. All right, so let me jump into uh, the latest information on DODIA and COVID. So first of all, I want to just thank, we did this uh, before, but I want to continue to thank everyone, parents, students, staff, administrators, for the work that went into making last year successful. We were able to keep the school open in person the vast majority of the year, and that was because a lot of effort, patience, hard work by everyone. Second, our new operational guide, it's version six. It does change uh, frequently as we update and work with uh, with garrison and command and take recommendations for CDC, but that operational guide does change. So the newest version came out last Friday. If you want to see that, you can go to the DODEA website. If you go to the tab that's school operations and COVID-19, you can download that and go through it for yourself, but that has all the latest DODEA guidance worldwide on how we're uh, approaching COVID going into this year. Uh, as I said, the guide is updated regularly to, to reflect uh, CDC recommendations, and we anticipate more guidance and updates as the year goes along. But to start the year, we will adhere directly to the practices that are listed in that operational guide. So, DODEA has multiple layered uh, prevention strategies in place to keep our students and staff safe. That includes masks, physical distancing, ventilation, hand washing, staying home when sick, getting tested, contact tracing, cleaning, disinfection. Those are all the layers that we have in there that are, uh, that are reflected in that guide. And I want to give you some specifics. There's a lot more information in there, but the ones that I think people really want to know today is first, of course, we're starting with full-time in-person school. Second, an adjustment from last year. Students will still social distance, but we're social distancing at three feet. That's the latest CDC recommendation. Third, students and staff in DoDEA schools will wear masks to start the year with the exception if you're, as if uh, students are doing something outside. But in school, students and staff will wear masks in DoDEA schools. We will still limit large events to the extent we can and have some control limit on non-essential visitors to the school. 
Uh, the most important thing, it's in the guide. We talked about this all last year in all these forms. I want to say it again. The most important thing is you can do, of course, uh, vaccine has already been talked about, but on a daily basis, we need parents and staff to pre-screen. If someone is sick, has any symptoms, don't send them to school. That is the most important thing you can do to help us keep our schools open and operating. The information uh, will come out to you in a form you have to fill out saying that you're willing to do that every day. Bottom line on that is when in doubt, keep your kid home from school, and that's the best way to keep everybody safe and healthy. More details will be coming out from your specific school on the operational guidance and what it means for them day in and day out. So you'll get that information and you can send any questions to your school administrator or contact my office. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, Lieutenant Colonel Little, the Director of Emergency Services and Deputy Chief of Police Jerry LaPlace will provide a gate access and school safety update. Hey, good morning to the team. I want to provide the community some ex expectation management regarding wait times at the gates. We've been receiving many inquiries as to why is there an average six to seven minute wait time at the gates and why are there only a certain number of lanes open at the gates? And it comes down to two factors really, manning and funding. We're currently short about 15 Department of the Army security guards and with this year's funding shortfall, we are constrained in the amount of overtime that we can offer. I will highlight that the MCOM standard for gate access is 15 minutes one five minutes. So despite our challenges, we are still well within the income standard. We do monitor the situation closely and we adjust gate manning where needed. Uh, for context, the six to seven minute average wait time is usually for about 45 minutes out of the day. With the other 23 hours of the day, the wait time averages about 30 seconds to one minute. If the community would like to help out, please head over to usajobs.com Look for Department of the Army Security Guards. We are actively hiring. Thank you for your time. Hey, good morning. I'd like to talk uh, a couple of bullets here on our slide here in reference to school safety. Uh, just a reminder, please, we ask that you slow down in the school zones. We will have officers enforcing the school zones in all schools. Uh, also, we would like to talk about uh, passing the school bus while the lights are on. It is illegal. Uh, we have had a few incidents in the past. Ask uh, those folks to please wait for the children to uh, get on and off the school bus uh, and pay attention to that area. Uh, we have had cameras on the bus. They do help us with the prosecution of that offense. Uh, additionally, I'd like to talk to uh, parents, to talk to their children about safely crossing the roads, uh, using the crosswalks, and bicycle safety. Use helmets, please. That's all. Thank you, sir. Next, Mr. Randy Moore, director of FMWR, will now provide a CYS and MWR update. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just real quick, in past forums, we've given you some updates on how we're doing in regards to staffing within our child and youth program. So right up front, our staffing shortfalls, our staffing challenges has less to do with the health conditions of the installation and everything to do with the uh, lack of, uh, of an applicant pool within our economic area. Uh, so right now, we have, uh, under normal conditions, we would have 340 full-day uh, spaces available for children to include uh, 33 part-day and hourly uh, spaces. Uh, right now, under the HP condi uh, conditions Bravo, we're capped at 270. Uh, that's an MCOM or an Enterprise Army-wide cap for our particular center. Our current enrollment is 268. That fluctuates, quite frankly, to 268 to 270 on a daily basis. Um, the good news is that our school aid center and our middle school and teen center, their staffing conditions have improved in the last three months, uh, and they are continuing to grow uh, and get better every day. Uh, another challenge we're facing is our FCC, our family child care program, which is the in-house or in-home child care that takes place within uh, the residents. Uh, right now, we do not have a single home available. We do have two providers that are in training. I would ask that you would encourage uh, your family members that might be interested in something like this to, to please take up that calling. So these staffing challenges are not in any way unique to Fort Knox. Quite frankly, this is an enterprise uh, challenge that's taking place throughout the Army. And to that end, uh, the Army is leading uh, through Installation Management Command an enterprise-led virtual hiring fair that's actually going to take place uh, tomorrow. So if we go to the next slide. 
So there is a virtual hiring fair starting tomorrow in the afternoon between 1 and 6 p.m. Uh, the incentives associated with these uh, hiring positions, $200 in recruitment bonus. Uh, that is payable uh, after successfully onboarding. And then a, an $800 retention bonus uh, for those folks that are, have six months of, of favorable and successful employment uh, once on board. So uh, the Army is making a sizable investment to try and encourage people to come back uh, to the workforce. Uh, information can be found, and quite frankly, the virtual fair will be conducted via our website, knox.armymwr.com. Uh, so please get that word out and encourage folks that might be looking for employment. Next slide. Some things that are coming up uh, within Family and MWR, obviously the 30th of July is Right Arm Night, uh, our, our typical monthly Right Arm Night uh, event. Uh, they've been really well attended here as of late. Great sponsorship uh, with First Command and USAA, so come on out and have a great time. Uh, followed that, that evening by the karaoke party in Fiddler's Green uh, that starts right after. Next. So uh, part of our race series, the next event is the Sasquatch sighting, so 5K fun run. Uh, so this is going to be on the 13th of August starting at 7 p.m. in Eastman Park. It starts and stops at Eastman Park. Go to knoxarmymwr.com for registration. You can see the prices listed there. And it's always a great turnout for these kind of fun runs, and this should be an exciting event. Next slide. So, Fort Knox Oktoberfest is back on the schedule. We're looking for Brooks Field 17 September uh, from 5 to 11. It says 11 o'clock, but we're going to go until people leave. So come on out and have a great time. Great German food, good German band, lots of good entertainment, uh, and plenty of things to do. Uh, last but not least, I just have a couple comments to make before uh, I get off. So, fall sports. So, the youth sports program had, has restarted. Uh, we, we had our, our summer season went very successful. Fall sports are also uh, getting ready to start. Uh, families can go to Parent Central Services to register for those fall sports programs or visit Building 500 at Parent Central Services. You can also get additional information on knox.armymwr.com for that as well. For the HRC and 5th Corps and any other inhabitants of the mod complex that might be in the room. Just a quick update, Patriot Commons, as you all know, has been also struggling to uh, staff uh, appropriately to reopen that facility. We are optimistic and very hopeful uh, that we'll be able to do that mid-August, uh, but just know that the staffing is our key and critical challenge associated with that, but it's our absolute desire to get that place as open as soon as possible. Uh, so hopefully uh, mid-August is our goal. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Next, Mr. Horace Bowden, the Installation Transportation Officer, will provide PCS information and tips. All right. Good morning. Uh, as most, uh, most folks in this room know, the House of Good Peak season, uh, both for the Army and DOD, has been extremely challenging uh, this summer. This is especially true at Fort Knox, and currently Fort Knox is under blackout dates through uh, August 23rd. What that means is the local moving companies in our area that support our soldiers are at max capacity. And the, the GIPSO, the Joint Personnel Property Shipping Office, will not allow any more bookings uh, during that time frame. In order to mitigate that, though, the Army and DOD has done several things. Uh, just recently, not reflected on the slide, they've opened up the windows that soldiers can report. They've authorized a 30-day early report and a 20-day deferment. Additionally, they've raised the amount of money that a soldier gets for a personally procured move to 100% of the JTR cost. Also, a recent ad is they've actually authorized an actually accrued cost personally procured move. A little bit more work involved because you have to go get quotes and you have to get approval through headquarters DA, but if it, if it fits in certain situations, it'll help soldiers uh, make their report date. Next, the Army has, has increased the number of Code 2 shipments. These are crated shipments that they use in order to get additional transportation assets to move soldiers' property, uh, other than the traditional padded moving vans you see around post. Next, the Army has increased the inspection standard, the government inspection standard for during your pack out and your reception of your property to 100%. Uh, so if you're on Fort Knox or in within one of the 42 communities that we support, uh, 42 counties, Government quality control reps will be reaching out to you, mostly by uh, in person, but in some cases where we can't get out to you, uh, by phone. Lastly, DOD is working to increase capacity both by authorizing additional warehouses and bringing in out-of-state companies. Just recently, we had a company come in from 
uh, Virginia, spend about two and a half weeks here with, soul, uh, with personnel TDY to help clean up some of those, some of that backlog, mainly in the Oconus side. All right, next slide, please. Okay, some tips. Uh, first and foremost, the number one problem that we see uh, in the transportation community is soldiers, when they get orders, delay coming to transportation to start the process. Um, so, number one, get to transportation as soon as you get orders. Secondly, move.mil is a great resource for soldiers and families. A um, lot of changing information going on out there. Move.mil has the current and has uh, very good frequently asked questions and some videos and other kind of things to walk soldiers through. In a digital form for your smartphone, the Army PCS app also basically mirrors what's out on move.mil. The Army has also stood up a personal property call center. Um, have to tell you though, they're averaging about 600 phone calls per day. Uh, so there is some backlog. If you get them early in the morning, you might be 17 in the queue. If you get them in the afternoon, you might be two, 300. Okay. Lastly, um, our next two things, face-to-face -face counseling. It's not required for every move, uh, but it is highly recommended. Face-to-face uh, -face counseling with the counselors on the second floor of One Stop bring you up to speed on the current changes. You know, the new Outlaw Act just posted. There's a, whatever the current piece is, they bring you up to speed uh, so you don't miss a pertinent piece of information. It's not mandatory except for the Army's first and last PCS, but again, highly recommended. Lastly, I'm going to put a plug in for my government quality control inspectors. Uh, these folks uh, inspect about 95% of the shipments that go in and out of Fort Knox, and they make, they make money and solve problems uh, before they get to the major level. So if you've got any kind of issue with your shipment, whether it's with a mover or trying to get something, engage those government quality control inspectors, and they're on the back side of or the top floor of one stop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, Mr. Kevin Corbin, the Director of Human Resources, will provide a reassignment orders update. Uh, good morning, all. So I'm going to play into what Mr. Bowden said because we are the driving force, the reassignment orders behind this whole process, I think. So we've had the perfect storm in soldiers' actions. Uh, regarding reassignment orders, specifically with the exceptions to policy for the reassignments due to the uh, pandemic, the HPCon requirements, uh, delays in soldiers submitting documentation, and, and most critically, the 100% turnover of my MPD contract staff. So that perfect storm has brought us to where we're at now. Uh, we reset the entire soldier action staff, and we're making ground but it's a large bubble at, at best. Uh, in order to apply some checks and balances in this area, I provide a couple avenues for our soldiers to use. Uh, one of the things is to verify the status, uh, we're working inside 30 September as, as our most critical assets right now. Believe it or not, they're still waiting on some of the orders. We have about uh, 23 to 30 in that zone and then the remaining is uh, bullet one, 363, to get us out to the 120-day mark. And the thing is, that, that kind of grows daily instead of shrinks based on the cap cycles that come out. So one of the things that I've tried to do is um, uh, create an opportunity for soldiers to submit their documents to a group box. We have four soldiers, BMM, that are checking emails daily, and it's an overwhelming amount, but they're doing a really good job and they're kind of sorting through that to make sure that we have what we need and getting that to one of the action officers in the contract. So uh, I've, I've obviously provided the uh, group mailbox. It's critical they use that. The, the second thing is if the soldiers have submitted their documents but they haven't got a response, the next step is to go to my contracting quality control so that uh, they, can, they can kind of do a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the, the key to this is we have an overwhelming amount of email to that person, so they need to label it orders inquiry with their last name. And if they don't get an answer in two days, their last stop is to come to me. I promise we'll get an answer. It may not be the best one, but we'll figure out where your documents are and what the status is uh, in the way ahead. And that's all I have. Thanks, John. Thank you, sir. Next, Mr. Jason Root, the Director of Public Works, will provide a DPW update. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A couple updates from DPW. The first one is on our water treatment plant. Uh, we've had a differing site condition and some material delays. Uh, 
If you go out Wilson Gate and you see the large number of Ford trucks that are sitting out there, you understand that that kind of material delay is affecting all uh, sectors of, of the economy right now, and our water treatment plant is no different. We're still expecting to be able to finish the, uh, the work uh, by 25 November of this year. Uh, so we've had a bit of a delay, but we are on track. I also want to emphasize that Hardin County Water continues to provide uh, safe uh, water that meets all of the garrison's needs. It's the same water we get Radcliffe, Elizabethtown. Next is the Iron Island Army Hospital demolition. Uh, we've heard some rumors out there that uh, since the, the, the building hasn't come down, uh, that it, the, the building might be repurposed for something else. That's actually not the case. What is the case is that uh, there has been some additional asbestos found inside the facility, and we've got to be able to, to dispose of that safely and effectively to make sure that our community is safe as we bring that facility down. Next slide, please. Stiston Circle, uh, we're, we're very close to this one being done, uh, and no one will be happier than me when we get this one completed. Uh, we are, uh, uh, in about another two weeks, we will have this project complete and we'll have uh, the traffic patterns restored around the garrison. We're looking forward to that. Uh, next is the Van Bora School. Um, we were worried about this one in terms of that it was going to be a very tight budget, but we've got some initial words that we're very optimistic that we're going to be able to make or, or that the Corps of Engineers is going to be able to make a ward before the end of the year. Really happy about that. That's the last of our legacy schools on the garrison to be replaced. Uh, very much looking forward to that. At one point in my construction career, I thought that dining facilities were the most complex things that I ever built. It's actually schools, because there's a dining facility inside the school along with acoustical space and all these other different things. It's a two-year build for the, for, for the schools, but with security, with delays, especially in terms of COVID, I think to set expectations properly, we're probably talking about a 24 to 25 school year opening, but again, I'll, there's going to be, a, 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 I'm sure, updates along the way for that. Finally, even though I don't have a slide for it, there's one last thing I'd like to address, which is HVAC. Um, it's uh, sort of the, the elephant in the room wherever I go, uh, but as General Evans mentioned, uh, we have 10,000 extra cadets uh, on, and, and staff that are, uh, that are helping them train on the garrison right now. We're entering into one of the hottest weeks of the entire summer. Uh, we have aging HVAC equipment that should have been replaced years ago. What could go wrong? Well, uh, here's my plea to the community. Don't suffer in silence. Uh, that's one. Two, don't assume that somebody else has reported the problem. If the problem persists more than, more than a few hours, make sure that you do the, the right thing and call our, call our technicians. We will get out as absolutely fast as possible. Uh, we've learned in the last few days, or re-learned, re that it, takes not, uh, it doesn't take very long before uh, out, out HVAC systems create humidity problems uh, that, can, that can spiral into mold problems that can cause a lot of damage. And our budgets are too tight uh, to be able to afford any kind of losses in this area. So we're asking for your help. Make sure that you report those problems immediately, and we'll do our best to get out there as fast as possible. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, Mr. Mike Brandenburg, the Chief of Natural Resources, will provide a hunting season update. Good morning. Um, so the Internet-based uh, program that we utilize here on the installation, and it's the, uh, the across the a lot of the bases in the uh, in CONUS is uh, iSportsman. And so that's easy enough to get to. It's ftknox.isportsman.net. Uh, more simple is people use Google or whatever, whatever search engine. You can just Google Fort Knox iSportsman. It'll be likely the first hit. Go on there and create an account. If you have an account from another installation, it's easy enough. You would just log in through our portal with your information from another base, and it will in ask you if you'd like to import that. You import it and then go on. All the information that a person would need regarding hunting and fishing is on that site. If you'll see that, um, the key point on that site is to read down through the information that scrolls down the front page, but also on the blue bar um, has uh, information on the seasons, hunting and fishing information, uh, and the uh, hunting areas, the hunting area forecast, the maps. There's interactive maps that are there that you can download. Um, anybody that likes to hunt or fish on the installation uh, might want to also, I'm not 
pushing Avanza, but Avanza is a very popular app that people utilize, and you can pull our maps into that app, and, uh, and then it, it shows you, tracks you just like Google, even, even if you don't have cell signal, which is important. A lot of places on the installation, uh, you may not have that. Uh, so that system is uh, how you acquire your permits and where all the information is, as well as check in and out for uh, various hunting and fishing activities. Uh, just a short overview of some of the upcoming seasons. You'll notice we don't have a uh, we don't address Sasquatch here, um, so that that's only a one-day season on 13 August, and you can only hunt those with a camera, and, and or maybe a, a burlap sack. Um, so um, I did overlook that, but uh, just just an overview. All this information is on our site. Um, next slide, please. Uh, another topic that I wanted to cover um, is uh, urban wildlife. So with expansion and some of the more uh, uh, green spaces that we have adjacent to our housing areas and our workspaces. Um, there, there's, there's quite a lot of wildlife that's very adept at living um, and co coexisting with us. And you see the list there, uh, you know, the common wildlife that exists around. Uh, but most problems can be minimized if we just follow a few simple things. Primarily, number one is do not feed animals either consciously or inadvertently. Uh, keep garbage cans uh, uh, secured. Sometimes the raccoons become very uh, adept at getting into those garbage cans and you may have to actually put a bungee cord or a latch on it uh, to keep them out. Uh, don't feed pets outside and leave the food out there after the pet eats, take the residu any residual food up. If you create a, a food resource, those animals will take advantage of it. Um, the Migratory birds are protected. We can, there are certain things we can do with that. Most of the, most of the problems that we have, uh, particularly in, in housing, are, uh, are not migratory birds and, and, and can be dealt with. Go ahead, please. So if you have an encounter, the, the primary thing is to leave wildlife wild. They do not need our help. Uh, when you see a fawn out there, it's not abandoned. That's how deer do. They leave the fawn, they go away, they come back. Um, we've passed that time of the year. We've made a really uh, strong effort this year to get information out. Uh, it seems like that we didn't have as many issues with people picking up uh, abandoned, quote, abandoned fawns. Uh, so that's great. We'll continue that going forward seasonal, uh, seasonally in June when our fawns uh, are typically born. Um, the, you know, most of the time the animals will leave on their own. Um, and and these wildlife species, if you leave them alone and give them their space, they pose extremely low risk uh, to anybody. Um, and typically the wildlife is the one that um, comes away with uh, a negative, negative result from, from any interactions. But the primary thing is that please leave wildlife wild. Don't try to help them. They don't need our help. Um, and you, one person, quote, trying to get help um, and feed an animal causes it to become dependent and not scared of humans, the next person that's scared of, say that red fox or, or raccoon, um, then, then now it becomes an interaction problem through no, no fault of the wildlife. So let's just leave wildlife wildlife wild. Um, if you do encounter bats, uh, please give us a call. Uh, you can call in the service desk and they'll contact us, the, the uh, service order desk, and they'll contact us and we'll, we'll make sure that they're taken care of. We do have three listed species on the installation. Most of the interactions that people have in the, in the urban space um, with bats are the unlisted, more common species, um, and they can be dealt with. And, and then and there's opportunities sometimes to maybe uh, exclude, um, exclude those animals from, from if they were to get into a building or something like that. So that's all I have, and thank you. Thanks, sir. Next, Mrs. Rella Braxton, the Education Services Officer, will provide an ACES update. Good morning. We have an open house planned for Friday, July 30th. Uh, this is an opportunity for soldiers and their family members to visit the Education Center, participate in a scavenger hunt, and learn more about our programs and services, as well as it presents an opportunity for them to earn a prize basket that's uh, sponsored by our partner schools. In September, September 16th, we have a joint event with Transition Assistance Program. It's a career and education fair. This event brings in 75 to 100 uh, employers and schools each year, and it's been a great success in the past, and we're hoping for another successful event this year. Uh, we have a college graduation ceremony scheduled for 15 October. 
We have had to cancel this a couple of times due to COVID, but we are hopeful that we will be on track and the event will go off with a bang in October. Army Ignited. Army Ignited has been a challenge and it continues to be a challenge for all of ACES. Uh, there has been some progress made. There is an exception to policy tool that was pushed on Sunday night and it worked and it pushed over 10,000 tuition assistance requests out into counselor queues for approval. So we are making some progress with Army Ignited but we do continue to have a backlog of cases. Uh, I want to highlight our basic skills education program. We have an amazing BSEP instructor right now. She has assisted over 69 soldiers in raising their GT score to 110 or higher. Those who raised it 110 and, or higher had it, an average of a 17 point increase in their GT score. And all other soldiers that participated in the program and tested had a 13 uh, point increase in their GT score. So if you would share this information with your soldiers, we want them to come to the Ed Center, we want them to participate in BSEP. Uh, we do have some flyers regarding these events on the table in the hallway, so if you'd like to help yourself as you go out. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next, Mr. Ken Boglin, the director of DPTMS, will provide a commander's assessment program and integrated protection exercise update. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the first slide, the command assessment program, 2,000 candidates will arrive on post with 400 cadre uh, to conduct the command assessment program from 20 September to the 22nd of November. The cadre arrive in mid-August for setup and conduct their rehearsal of concept from August 20th to the 26th with an expected visit by the Vice Chief of Staff for the walkthrough on the 26th. This program allows the Army to further assess candidates for command. Cadet Command, USREC, and HRC are the primary commands in support of this operation. And sir, there's currently no word on the final stationing of uh, the, the course. Running concurrently, 4th CAV and the installation supports the Army Best Warrior Competition from 1 through 7 October. Billeting and venues are on track, sir. No issues at this time. Next slide. Sir, this morning we are completing the tabletop exercise for missing personnel with the staff focused on missing soldier scenarios, one involving a death and one uh, just a, a soldier that's unaccounted. The first step in the validation of our installation SOP. The installation internal protection exercise is scheduled for 24 to 26 August, and the exercise integrates the missing soldier, our quick reaction force response plan to inoperative ICIDs, and the loss of an access control point. This exercise over two days allows us to execute operational periods and shift changes maximizing the staff's training. Next slide. So here's the map with the, the path of the tornado starting south of Godman and moving north over Brandenburg Station Gate, which will be the accent point that we will close into the Muldra Ammunition Storage Area where the QRF will be located. Sir, not on my slide deck, uh, just an informational, the uh, installation supports a Patriot Day at the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery on 11th September is a great team effort. Cadet Command is providing chairs, tents, and ceremony participants. HRC is providing the color guard, ARAC providing ushers and wreath bearers, 19th Engineer, the firing squad, DES providing responders for the ceremony, and laying of the wreath along with a static display of police car and a engine. All right, this concludes the schedule of Fort Knox topics. We'll soon open the floor up to others here today who would also like to make community announcements. Some quick ground rules first. As it is important to note this remains an official government event. Non-federal entities like groups, clubs, or private organizations are encouraged to make announcements, keeping in mind that the topics must be relevant to supporting the Fort Knox community. For local business announcements, we have to be restrictive in this forum. Any businesses interested in briefing are limited to highlighting free or greatly reduced offerings for service members and their families. Bringing general awareness or publicizing, pitching, or advertising a for-profit organization is not allowed. Announcements must be brief, no more than one to two minutes to allow others to have time to make announcements during the time we have here today. Okay, I'd ask those planning to make announcements, please make their way to the podium now.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew, Transition Assistance. I'd like to thank Rella for pointing out our career and education fair. I'd encourage you to take it back to your units. Encourage your soldiers, your spouses, their family members, and everybody on the community that is either looking for education or a new career path to come visit us on 16 September right here in the Sabre and Quill. We're going to have between 75 and 100 employers and educational institutions to come visit with us. A lot of work going on in this. Uh, Sergeant Major Fogel and I have a little challenge. We need 500 folks to come visit us on 16 September for the Career and Education Fair. Thank you. I'll be quick. I know, CSM's like, get out, quick. Okay, so um, right at this moment, we're having our backpack giveaway. Um, Operation Homefront and Red Cross have partnered, and if, it's a little late if you want backpacks, but we do have tons of school supplies. Um, Dollar Tree and Operation Homefront and Red Cross have partnered, and so we have tons of pencils, erasers, you name it, you got it. So tomorrow, between nine and three, your soldiers, it doesn't matter what rank, can come to the Red Cross. Of course, wearing a mask if you don't have your shots, but we are, you're welcome to come and possibly get school supplies. We don't have uh, any kindergarten backpacks, so I am sorry, but we didn't purchase anything, and Operation Homefront said possibly next year. Blood drive. Um, we're also having a blood drive August 2nd, and if you all would please, please, donate your blood. We really need your blood. Of course, the soldiers need your blood, and of course, the hospitals, and we are very, very short on blood. It's at the Hansen Center, and all this information is on these flyers, and I'll have it back in that area, at the exit area, so that way you can pick it up. We also have our Warrior Warehouse. Um, how should I say it? It's like a fun shopping. It's like going to Walmart, but it's all free. So if you're brand new, um, E6 and below this Thursday night, from four to seven, and we're dying of heat stroke um, in building 1750 CSM, so, you know, could you put in the air conditioning um, request? But anyway, so between four and seven, E6 and below can come on down, and then come shopping, and everything is free, and it's from f between furniture, clothing, you name it, we got it, all right? And then on Friday, Saturday, we open it up to the public, and you guys are welcome to come. We ask you for donation, but if you don't have the money, we got it. But the donation goes back to the food pantry, and that's the other announcement I have. And usually the second week of each month, we do a food giveaway. Um, normally on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, these six and below can come, and we provide non-perishable items. Um, and then on Friday, our wonderful veterans and retirees are welcome to come as well. But any emergencies to all the new people, the command group here, any emergencies, critical cases, please call the Red Cross and we will specifically make an appointment for that client and we will provide them with whatever we need, whatever we have, which would be food, clothing, et cetera. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that ran uh, Saturday. It was hotter than sin, but um, all the money that goes, that basically was for the run, will go to the Red Cross Food Pantry and Santa's Workshop. If anybody's any questions, please feel free to call the Red Cross. And if you'd like to volunteer, and this is not pushing, you know, money here, but if you'd like to volunteer for the soldiers that want the points to get the cute little badge of courage, um, the Red Cross is willing to take care of you on the weekends as well as on the weekdays. But thank you again to the units that have been helping Red Cross out. We really appreciate your support. Thank you. Hi, I'm Adam Castanier. I'm one of the pastors at Grace Heartland Church, and, and really, we just want to uh, welcome our military families into the community. We are so appreciative of you all, and, and not just for your service to our country, but really for your leadership and your involvement right here in our community. And so we want to host a lunch in, in honor of you all on August 8th. It will take place right after our 11 o'clock service, so from 12 to 1, uh, we're going to do a spaghetti lunch for you and, and your families. We'd love for any of you all to join us, but honestly, we really want to reach out to all of our new families in the community. I know that making moves is a, a part of the military life. Um, 
I, I grew up here. My mom was a, a retired teacher here at Fort Knox. And, and so I've lived around that. But at the same time, I realize every time you make one of these moves, it presents its challenges of settling into a new community. So we just want to welcome all of our military families that are new to the area um, and just give them a chance to, to connect with, with others in the community. Um, so we really appreciate your help in, in spreading the word about this. Uh, there are some flyers on the table out in the hallway. If you want to pick one of these up, uh, and like I said, we'd love to, to have you, and no pressure, but uh, we'd just love for you to join us for, for some good food and some fellowship. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, a couple notes. Uh, Annie Hamilton from the Mee County Chamber wanted everybody to know that Mee County Fair is going on this week through Saturday, and then also the Kentucky State Fair uh, begins on the 19th of August to the 29th of August. And uh, I'll now turn it over for remarks from our garrison commander, Colonel O'Brien, sir. Or, sorry, Major, sorry. Hey, everybody, I just want to hit some notes of uh, some of the stuff that we talked about earlier. Uh, first one, orders, and the orders process. Uh, right now, uh, we are working to get 120 days out. What I would tell all the command teams out there, make sure that your, your teams are monitoring that. Uh, what, what we have kind of instituted at our level is anybody that's on assignment instructions more than seven days uh, and, and uh, MPD has not received any of their information, we're going to send you an update on that uh, and kind of request your assistance in making sure that these soldiers are getting their levy packets and everything turned in uh, so that we can get their, their, their orders timely. Uh, with that, uh, when they get the email, the, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reemphasize the importance of them contacting transportation immediately. Uh, I would tell you that that is one of the biggest challenges we have, folks not meeting transportation deadlines. Uh, when, when that happens, we are, we are having to go back in, do deferments, uh, create amendments to orders, uh, and it just kind of exacerbates the problem. So just make sure command teams are involved in that, leaders at the lowest level as, as well. Next, uh, transportation. Uh, Horace mentioned it, in-person counseling. I would, I would absolutely uh, tell you that it is critical, especially right now that folks are doing in-person uh, uh, in counseling. I would tell you the folks that are screwing it up the most are, are our senior NCOs and some of our, our mid-grade officers. Uh, so we just need to make sure all, the, all those folks that we all think that we know it, uh, get in there, get the counseling, and make sure that you're taking care of yourself, taking care of your families. Uh, next, I want to cover, uh, I'm going to cover housing real quick. Uh, recently, so, so IHG uh, was matching PH rates uh, at their hotels on post for folks that were waiting for on post quarters. Uh, that has actually been extended, and IHG is now covering PH rate for anyone that is looking for quarters. So off post, on post, whatever. Uh, now, it will not be retroactive, uh, but, but moving forward, uh, that is space available, uh, so since they are a PAL, uh, our, our uh, POIs take priority, but as space available in, in the IHG, uh, those rooms are available at BH rate for our in-processing families. Uh, next, uh, so, so we're all tracking the housing uh, challenges that we've got here. Uh, we have submitted fr from the installation uh, up to OSD a TLE extension out to 60 days. That is currently at... Uh, the, the Army G1 MNRA. Uh, we're waiting for OSD approval on that. Uh, we hope to see that in the near future. Uh, next, we've also addressed with the Army our military housing area assessment, uh, and we've also gone back through and done another uh, housing market analysis here for Fort Knox. So that's getting ready to close for us. We hope that that's going to kind of uh, fix some of the BAH challenges that we have, and then with the MHA. Uh, hopefully we will get to include parts of Louisville into our area, which should also increase the, the BAH, BAH for the local area. Uh, last, uh, for, for those folks that still have challenges, uh, unexpected financial issues, uh, we're all tracking uh, AER. Uh, what I would tell you is that AER has increased services right now for loans and grants, uh, and they're looking at encompassing folks that have unexpected moving expenses. Uh, so if you have soldiers that are out there right now, have challenges, have bills that they can't pay because due to unexpected experiences from PCS, a AER will approve those. Uh, just go ahead and get with your, your AER reps or reach out to uh, Shannon at our, our uh, AER here on post, and we'll get them uh, taken care of. So that's all I got, sir. 
Okay, uh, just real quick, uh, Colonel Lance O'Brien, the new garrison commander. Um, this is my second garrison, for those who didn't know that. Uh, I guess I didn't do no, uh, well enough as a Lieutenant Colonel 05 level commander, and the Army thinks I need to do some retraining, so I'm back in the garrison. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm extremely uh, happy that I'm here at Fort Knox. This is my second time here at Fort Knox, and, I, and actually this was my first choice uh, within the installations category of uh, the CSL. So other than that, uh, I'm going to open up uh, the floor to anybody who has any questions here in the audience, or I guess if we got some on Facebook, uh, we'll go ahead and open up the floor. So there are no questions uh, from Facebook that haven't already been answered. Uh, please don't be shy if you have a question here in the audience. Nobody wants to go first. <laughs> Ma'am. Well, uh, oh. Is the Human Resources Directorate hiring any new employees to help with the backlog of um, the reassignment orders by chance? Uh, Erica's over there. So yes, ma'am, to answer your question, we added four additional staff, and then we had four BMM soldiers uh, furthering their education on how to do the orders process. <laughs> the problem is the, bu the bubble was so large that it's just taken time to get through it, but we're capped out. Everything is, uh, of course, budget constrained also. So we've increased uh, working through it, and we think we have the answer. Uh, just a little bit more time. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any more questions, but I have, I do have one request um, for folks that are on Facebook or here in the room. I would ask you, I want to see your ICE comments. I read probably between 30 and 50 ICE comments every day, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't bother me a bit. But there are some specific ones uh, that I would ask that you go ahead and put your contact information on there. Uh, don't worry, it's non-attributional. There's no retribution. Some of the current ones that I've seen that are it would be very helpful to have the contact information are probably three or four of the ones that I've seen when it comes to orders. So somebody's asking me a question, and I know our DHR director, they have orders, they're on an extended, they're on a shortened timeline. If I can't contact you, because just be aware that we're in the middle of, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of orders production every day, all the time. So if we don't have your contact information for an instance like that, please put it on there, because if you do, I'm going to see it, the DHR director is going to see it, and guarantee you that they will contact you. Don't be afraid to put your contact information on there. I do know that there are other times that people are, are making comments, and they don't want to put their contact information on there. That's great. It provides me some good reading at the end of the day when I just need to let my, you know, have a good laugh here and there. But again, on things like that, just please put your contact information on there, and that will be another way, specifically with orders or something along that lines, that we can get in contact with you. And then other than that, I'll pass it back over to Mr. Campbell. Thanks, sir. Uh, as a reminder, uh, those uh, mask-wearing uh, pamphlets on your table, please take them, put them in your units, in your unit areas. If there's not enough here, there's some on the back table as you walk out. Also, uh, all the information that people had uh, brought are information tables out there on your way out. And again, if you want to get the slides, you can put your email address there. And this concludes the Community Information Exchange, the next CIE. We'll be right here on 26 October. Have a great day.